Hey y'all, it's Kay from The Literary Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with part two of our round one of Battle of the Books of 2023. Just a really, really quick recap. Um, I go over basically the full rules in my first video, which I will link in the description below and also up at the cards. But in this is my way of determining what my top reads are were for the year of 2023. All of the books that were either non-DNFs, three stars or higher, or not rereads are were put into a kind of sports bracket. The computer did a random matching of books. Some books are carried over into the next round with buys in the first round. So if you don't see some of your favorite books that you were looking for, stay tuned for round two because they will definitely come up in round two if they fall under the rules. So I'm just going to get jump right in because we've got a bunch of books to talk about. As I did in our first video, I'm going to talk more about the books not moving on to round two um, because our round, you'll hear about the books that did win this round again in round two. So first up is a doozy of a matchup. We have Death Masks versus Wistful Ascending. So Death Masks was the last book in the Dresden series that I've read. I think it was book five or six, I want to say. Um, Wistful Ascending is book one in the Hybrid Helix series by JCM Byrne. I absolutely loved both of these books. But I'm going to give this one, I think, to Wistful Ascending. Because that was just a, such a fun, crazy, zany, superhero sci-fi book that I didn't know what to expect. And it threw me through so many loops. I have to give that one to Joe Byrne. As I said, I will talk more about that later. Death Masks, like I said, is book five or six in the Dresden series. And while I loved it, it certain things don't stand out in my mind when I'm looking for a winner in these matchups. Um, I can't exactly tell you what stands out because it's different for each book. I think of the two books and I think which one I remember more of and which one had a lasting impression on me. And Death Masks, I loved it, but it doesn't stand out to me so much in my head. Next up, oh, this is another hard one. These are getting harder and harder as we go. Uh, a necromancer called Gam Gam versus the Voyage of the Forgotten. So we have a supernatural novella about an old woman who's a necromancer and knits warm clothing for her undead versus a book two in a series that completely blew my mind, the Kingdom of Liars series. I think it's the Mercenary King series, actually. Kingdom of Liars was the first book. This is by Nick Martell, of course. Um, this one, this round, I'm going to give to The Voyage of the Forgotten because if I remember correctly, that was also my favorite book in that series. So, but let's talk about a necromancer called Gam Gam for just a second. This was a novella by Adam Holcomb that I read in the semifinal rounds of the Sphinx Championship series. I cherish this book so much. It gave me some light-hearted, supernatural fun, but also fun with consequences. We have Mina and we have Gam Gam and their relationship as it develops through this novella is just so special. And Gam Gam is our necromancer who knits hats and scarves and sweaters and socks for her undead because even though they're undead, they should not be forgotten and neglected and I just love that book so much so if you're looking for a fun supernatural book that is a short quick read consider picking up a necromancer called Gam Gam by Adam Holcomb you could probably read this novella in one sitting if you had the time our next matchup is the Game of Kings versus a Game of Thrones this one goes to a Game of Thrones because that series has become one of my favorite series um, and for me the Game of Kings was interesting at times but very very hard for me to follow along it was partly not partly my brain wasn't in the right space for it at the time but just Dorothy Dunn's prose was so rich that it required a lot more focus than I had to give at the time our next match up is 
equal rights versus nightfall and other dangers we've got a terry pratchett book in the witches series versus nightfall and other dangers which was a short story collection a horror short story collection which was totally out of the norm for me um let's see let's see let's see this one i'm gonna give to nightfall because it was totally different and some of those stories haunted me for a very long time whereas i enjoyed equal rights but it kind of felt a little flat for my expectations of a Terry Pratchett book. So this one I'm giving to the horror short story collection. Our next matchup is The Kingdom of Liars, which I just talked about a couple turns ago, versus Silhouette in the Shadow, which is another superhero sci-fi self-pub book. Shoot. You know what? I'm going to give this one to Silhouette in the Shadow. The Kingdom of Liars I absolutely loved, but it wasn't my favorite book in the series. It w But it was an incredible start to this series. It had me needing to binge that entire series, which if you've watched my channel, you know I don't do that often. So I really, really enjoyed Kingdom of Liars, but... I am actually going to give this one to Silhouette in the Shadow, which I think is rare because I think I rated Silhouette in the Shadow slightly less than The Kingdom of Liars, but it stayed with me more than Kingdom of Liars. Next up, we have Crossroads of Twilight versus The Return of the Knights. This one I'm giving to The Return of the Knights. Crossroads of Twilight was a Wheel of Time book that just fell so flat for me. This was part of my slog. I think everyone has a different timeline for when their slog and the Wheel of Time happens, but Crossroads of Twilight was like the peak of my slog for me. I just had such a hard time getting through that book that any just about any book up against that one is going to win. Let Your Lips Twitch versus The Two-Faced Queen. So Let Your Lips Twitch was a very unique short story collection. It was a humorous short story collection. I absolutely loved it. I read the ARC version of it before it went live and I loved it. Um, Two-Faced Queen is book three in the Mercenary Kings series um, trilogy and I loved it. That book just completely blew me away. Actually, I think I have those mixed up. I think Two-Faced Queen was book two and Voyage of the Forgotten was book three. Either way, both of those books blew me away and they win their rounds. Like I said, Let Your Lips Twitch was such a fun short story collection. We had a short story about books in the library The point of view was from these books that are not often checked out. They're in the self-help section of the library and it just had me laughing so, so much. If you're looking for a good short story collection that's going to make you laugh throughout the whole thing, Let Your Lips Twitch is your book for that. Next up, we have The Trials of Ashmount versus Deathless Beasts. This one is going to The Trials of Ashmount because that is the book that made me a fan of Grimdark by John Palladino. Deathless Beast um, is a fantasy, epic fantasy book written by Andrew Meredith and it kind of fell a, a mid for me. I was not a big fan of it. I didn't get along with it as well as I hoped to. But I did read Thrice by him and I think we have that later on in this round. And that one got along really well, so I'm hoping that one moves on instead. The Traitors We Are versus A Dance with Dragons. Oh my gosh. This is a hard one because I love The Traitors We Are so much and I love Michael Roberti. Um, but A Dance with Dragons was the, I think, the fifth book in the Game of Thrones series, the last one that we got. And I have to give it to that A Dance with Dragons. Um, but The Traitors We Are is such a unique um epic fantasy military fantasy book where you're not quite sure who the good guys and who the bad guys are or if there are even good versus bad guys in here everyone is kind of a morally gray character and depending on what chapter and what point of view you're reading from kind of sort of 
determines who you're rooting for at that moment. At least for me, it did. So I really, really enjoyed The Traitors We Are and I highly recommend it. If you want good morally great characters, good porridge scenes, um, and some good military fantasy fighting scene. Next up, we have Dictator versus Buzzard's Bull. Dictator was a historical fiction book about Cicero. I believe this was the third book in the series, the Cicero Trilogy versus Buzzard's Bull, which is the second book in John Palladino's series. I'm giving this one again to John Palladino. I just love that series so much. Dictator, this book, this whole series really, for me, was an eye-opener to um, ancient Roman times. We This was told from a point of view at the time where Caesar has taken over essentially as a dictator and um, Dictator, the book itself, gives us a look into the assassination of Caesar and when that happened and everything that happened that surrounded it and just really opened my eyes to that time period and those characters there. Our next matchup we have Knife of Dreams versus We Promised You a Great Main Event which was the WWE history book that I read. Um, Knife of Dreams is book 11 in the Wheel of Time series. I just finished that at the end of the year. Um, I think I'm going to give this one to our WWE book because I really enjoyed that book and it matched up two of my lesser known passions of history and WWE wrestling and I just loved learning about all of that. And this will also make John very happy because he's been waiting for some of his books to move on to another round. Knife of Dreams, I enjoyed it more than some books in the Wheel of Time series but not as much as others so it kind of felt like mid high range um, high in the middle range to me. The thing I enjoyed most about Knife of Dreams was that it wrapped up some of the threads that we've had throughout this whole series really well while leaving some open for questions and moving on in the series. Our next match up is Becoming Solo versus The Chase Begins, which is two of the novellas that I read for the Sphinx Championship series. This one I'm going to give to The Chase Begins. For me, Be Becoming Solo was um, a good novella. It had great characters, but I just didn't understand their motivation. Why did they want to become solo? Why was it so important to these characters? We got that they really wanted to and that was their motivation for this novella, but I didn't really understand what was so important about becoming solo that they just would do anything to become solo. Our next matchup is The Fires of Heaven versus Tale of the Border Knight. This one goes to Tale of the Border Knight, which was a prequel to... So. Fires of Heaven, if I remember correctly, is another one of the Wheel of Time books that I didn't like so much as others, and that's why I'm giving it to the Tale of Border Knight. Um, there were a bunch, oh, because there are so many Wheel of Time books, a lot of times when I think back to the specific books, they kind of blur together in my brain, so it's really hard for me to keep track of which ones are which. So I might be moving on some books that I didn't like as much and now moving on others that I did like more but that's the nature of the game today. Our next matchup is Welcome to the Jungle versus Lily. This one is by far going to Lily which is the last book that we have right now in the Nightmare Land Chronicles series and absolutely blew my mind. Welcome to the Jungle is I believe the first or the second graphic novel for the Dresden Files series. Y'all know I love the Dresden series so much and I loved seeing it in graphic novel for form, um, but it just could not stand up to Lily. Our next matchup is Winter's Heart versus Sleepwalking. This is another Nightmare Land Chronicles series and Winter's Heart just kind of fell flat for me. So I'm giving this one to Nightmare Land Chronicles series again Daniel Burnett is making out well in this video series. Um, Winner's Heart, like I said, it fell flat for me. It was exciting at times. There were parts that I really, really liked, but just like a lot of the Wheel of Time books, there were parts that 
I felt we absolutely did not need and I was bored during. Speaking of which, we have Lord of Chaos versus our Star Wars trilogy book. I'm leaving this as one book instead of separating it into each book because it came in a collection. So I'm treating it kind of as similar as a short story collection. Um, I'm going to give this one to the Star Wars trilogy because I really enjoyed seeing those movies in novelization format. And like I said, Lord of Chaos is another one of those real time books that just doesn't really stand out to me in my head. We have The Slab versus Grave Peril. The Slab was one of our Gears of War books versus Grave Peril. Um, I'm going to give this one to Grave Peril, which was one of the Dresden File books, I think book two, if I remember right. And so the slab, I would have enjoyed more if it was placed in a different part in our series. So the slab kind of was almost like a prequel, but it came later in the series and it was just really confusing as to where that placement was. It should have been first in the series but it fell like mid-series, so it was really confusing to read where it was written. Next up, we have just a couple matchups left. Molting of a Queen versus Yes Please. This one I'm giving to Amy Poehler's memoir. I listened to the audiobook version of this and I loved it so, so much. It gave me great insight into her life. We not only saw her public life that we know of, but also some of her personal life. And I really loved that. Molting of a Queen was a science fiction novella I read for Sphinx and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but it just felt like there was something missing to give it that five star rating for me. Next up, we have Phased versus Full Moon. Now, Full Moon was another dress in series files book that I read in that series. Phased was a supernatural book I read by Tori Tekin. Um, Tori Talks on booktube and I loved everything about that book. So this one is going to phase. Full Moon I actually really really enjoyed. I've loved all of the Dresden Files books but to me this is one of those situations where one book just slightly ekes out the other one. A Clash of Kings versus Soulless. This one I'm going to give to Soulless because that book was so unique and it made me laugh and it gave me Something that I needed at the time. A Clash of Kings is one of the Song of Ice and Fire books. I want to say book two or book three. And it was, although I loved all of the books in that series, A Clash of Kings I think was the book that I liked least in the series. And so I'm going to move on Solus compared to Clash of Kings. Conspirata versus The Flashlighter. So we have another Cicero Trilogy book versus another Nightmare Land Chronicles series. And this one I'm actually going to give to Conspirata um, because I enjoy, I think that was book two in our Cicero Trilogy. I enjoyed that one more than I enjoyed The Flashlighters, even though I loved both of these series so much. Man, it is really raining out there. Sorry again if the lighting seems weird. It's raining all day here and I gotta get these filmed so I'm sorry if it looks weird. The Flashlighters was, I wanna say book two, three or four in the Nightmare Land Chronicles series and while I loved that whole series, this one had some weird moments for me that were just too much to get over. Just two more matchups left. In round one, we have Snuff versus Lost Books and Old Bones. Snuff was a Terry Pratchett City Watch book, and Lost Books and Old Bones was a Scottish bookshop mystery book. I'm going to give this one to Lost Books and Old Bones, mostly because, to me, I don't remember exactly which one Snuff was. I know it was one towards the end of the City Watch series, but that is one that I can't remember a lot of specifics of. So I'm giving this one to Lost Books and Old Bones. And our last matchup of round one in Battle of the Books 2023, The Hexologist versus Just Like Home, which is such a hard one to go with. So we have a new Josiah Bancroft crazy zany fantasy series versus a horror 
um, book which was totally different than anything I would ever read before. It presented itself almost as a haunted house book, but it wasn't quite a haunted house book. There was something more going on there. And just like how my short review, my 30 second review for this book is one of my top viewed videos out of all of last year. So that is just really weird to me. But I think I'm gonna give this one to Josiah Bancroft because I just loved The Hexologist so so much so that wraps up round one in battle of the books of 2023 let me know in the comments below out of these books that i talked about so far which one surprised you the most that moved on or didn't move on which ones did you agree with the most um as always, as I said at the beginning of this video, if there are books that you know are, you are looking for in these videos and you didn't see them in this one or the last video in round one, stay tuned for round two because they're sure to come up in round two. I am looking forward to seeing which books the computer matches up for round two. And these decisions are going to become harder and harder as we go along. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.